<laughs> well, as you can see, I have a canvas board on an easel. I have color on it. It's going to be black and white. Now, most artists, <clears throat> most artists start out doing sketches. Sketches are done in pencil, white and gray. The amount of pressure used from the pencil to the paper and so on and so forth, whether it's a soft lead, hard lead, or whatever. So a lot of artists, and I am one included, would start out with my sketches and then would transfer them to canvas or canvas board in this case. Monochrome is underrated. <clears throat> Excuse me, my book, Monochrome is underrated. You get more depth from black and white than you do with color. If you've ever compared a photograph to a color photograph, the exact same photograph, one right there, it's just not pronounced. <coughs> so with that said, I have put together some of my white, titanium white, and gesso with the drying retardant agent, which is a uh, blending gel. It's a slow dry blending gel. This is how to dry faster than oil, but not as fast if it was just plain acrylic with no blending medium in it. As a wet background. So I have my one of my wider brushes. I notice that I'm clamping it in place. This the clamp on the top doesn't come all the way down. And uh, so with that in mind, I'm gonna see if I can grab something to anchor it in the back. I'm just going to have it so it kind of sticks to the, the uh, form of the easel. And these little things that you come up with, you think, you're like, oh, darn it. This thing is like moving all around. Here I am trying to show someone how to do this, and it doesn't want to cooperate, and it makes it look probably amateurish, but I would, an amateur loves art. A professional conforms to whatever is the predominant kind of favorite in the market. So one conform, but I'm not conforming to anything. I'm going to do my own thing. Now that's a little bit better. Staying, staying up there, it's not like flipping off that's the canvas. So I'm just going to flip my little just so back from out here. Now it's already been primed. It's a prime canvas board. They all all are. Their paintings, you start from the distance. And I'm using longer stemmed brushes for a reason. Because I want to be able to have you see the strokes as they go in there. Now, kind of, kind of like outline it without sketching and putting it in there. And I want this to be like a stream. It's the winds around and comes down to the front of the of the picture. So I'm going to have this little stream start back here and kind of wind around and ends up here on the stream. And I love snow scenes. I don't know about you, but I love snow scenes. So that's it branches out. And so I know that I get a little lump there. And that's actually going to be, there's going to be something here. I'm, I'm actually going to put a little, I don't know, maybe a little hut of some sort. And, you know, it all, it all kind of falls together. I don't pre-plan these. I just kind of like go with it. Now, that is the, I use a small uh, chiseled edge brush. Uh, you know, kind of, eh, it's there, but it's not there. So, with that... It's mostly going to be, but you want to indicate clouds in that. Wintry skies are typically cloudy and gray. So I'm just going to go across light. I am barely touching this canvas. Okay. I'm barely, I'm literally barely touching it, letting some of the black and white, which is a very, very little, literally tell me where the clouds are. It's telling me where they are. I'm not putting a single bit of effort into the sky. Other than just barely, barely touch. Barely touch. I want more gray. A darker cloud blowing, showing up in there. I'll push a little more pressure on it. But that is all I'm doing. It's just like that. 
check like that. And I'm redefining my little heart line. And I didn't, I didn't draw a cloud. I didn't make a poof. There's no rules. Remember, there's no rules. I just decided I'll put a background, a wet white background, gessoed. And I'm just going to put a little bit of black in my brush with the white and just paint it. And I'm not pre planning it. I'm just letting it, letting it evolve. That's my winter sky. Now, for this is way back in the distance. And we know this is a stream coming up from the hills or whatever. So, what I do is just to see what kind of stroke this gives me. I'm taking, I have not changed any paint in. I've left the same paint in. I'm just going and doing just far off. Just take your brush like this and cross that little horizon and just let it talk to you. It's going to tell you where they're at. Now that's a little dark. So I know I got to go back in there and, and play with that a little bit. But there are different heights of trees back there. And go back. And there might, there's, you know, there's going to be layers of them. So you can see some of them darker than the others, right? A little bit more white. And just make it more of the grassy kind of thing. Just like that. Barely touch it because it's still wet. That white um, gesso back is still white. And still with dark spot. Those are, you know, could be grass, bushes, whatever. And short, tall. A little grassy knoll area. Could be even, you know, flowers or that, whatever. Now, what's really neat is if you want to make this look like it's a hill, people say I'm crazy. <laughs> I must know. So, I would make this section here where that so-called water is because it's a bank it's going to have you know a kind of an edging i'd say this is a hill I'd say this whole this whole little thing is a hill and we're you know things that look like plants of some corn some kind something over there and the way you do it is in the flat in the you put more white on your brush, you just kind of draw it up just a little bit. Pronounce you're going to be able to see. Not so much because this is in the, in the back background. So it gets a little lighter. Same thing back here. These aren't going to be as wall. They're not going to be as dark. But it's going to be a light kind of gray color. And it's going to transfer down into here. Like I said, if this was a place where the kids would go to sled, then you'd see sledding tracks. And we're going to put some sledding tracks in there just to give the illusion that from here, the kids have been sledding. And there's going to be tracks down, down to here. We're going to have them come from the place where my grandfather grew up. It was called Snake Hill. Dangerous place to go sledding. But they all slur. Okay. So we're going to do this. Now to make tracks for, so you want to have a wet brush instead of a dry brush. I've been using a dry brush for this. So you want a wet brush. You want just enough to have it a more depth in the snow from the, and we're just going to, Now that's a little on the thick side. That's because I'm using a wet brush. So I want to be able to show you how to fill that, but this is a better one. Here we go. And it comes down here. Now that's, you're going to be able to see it more as it gets closer. So down closer to you, as you're going to see. And that's the way you can thin them out and double them up on the water there. Rose and water. It's not going to be such a big. To kind of take some paint off the brush and give it more of a, bra a dry brush kind of feel. And that way you can thin out where your tracks are from the sledding. 
just like this. Just pull it away. You're pulling away that extra paint. That's what you're doing. You're pulling it away. Just like that. Soft them out just a little bit because the tracks aren't in the snow as you lighten it up with more white. Right to, right to the water's edge. I had a sketch that I did and it's, I was going to try to duplicate it, but I cannot locate it. It's, it's been uh, a couple of art shows since. And uh, but that's okay. We'll make this one up here. Coming out this way. Of course, now this is going to be a little bit lighter on this side than in the front. Whereas this back here is going to be more white, white because it is further away. If it was color, it would be the same thing. If it was a blue, it would be a lighter shade of blue. This is a really great way of doing silhouetting. You can silhouette with foreground or your silhouetting color. Now, to show that there, there is a bank on here, that's where you come in with a little darker and which you're going to use is a little, I'm going to use a chisel one because I like the way it works. I got an angled chisel brush. So what to do is in the foreground, it's going to be very dark. Going towards the water, right? Very dark. And then it's going to go back into, into your thirds. When you get to your second third, that. And you want to draw it down to into the water. Well, it's supposed to be water. And you're going to follow it around. So you can see it going out there. But it's not real distinct anymore. You can see it. So close its darkest. You can even make this portion here like it's a steeper, a steeper bank by making right at the top really dark and give it that look. And this comes to the surface and it goes down deep again, down at the bottom. And the other side, same thing. To give it that, like it's a cliff or it's a drop off. You want it to show like it's dropping off real deep on both sides. So this is, gives you that depth, that depth of the water, that look, that, oh, I want to, don't go swimming there. It might be too deep. Just a darker at the top edge, always darker. Edge. And for the, the effect of the water, I just white on it. I didn't wipe it off for a reason. I want to start there. I'm going to pull that, pull that from the shadows of the white there so that I can go and give that illusion that there's moving, movement. A little bit drier. And just pull it across. Pull it across, pull it across. From one side, from one bank to the other, just pull it across. Then I'm going to do this little leg over here. Now it's not going to be as dark. It's more of a distance kind of spot. We're going to put that in there. Uh, put some more white in there. It might even come this way. And then I'm going to outline it. This is going to cover it up in a minute and you'll see what I'm saying. And here you can mark the bank with distance. Same way, just not black at the edge, but dark gray at the edge. Pull that black out of there in the water. Now you've got your reflection on the bushes above. Pull that down. Just pull down. And just 
Charas. Charas. So that you can see the shape of these little bushes or whatever they are in the water. There's your reflection. See your reflection here? Here's the bush up here. There's your shoreline that separates it from the water. And then when you draw your brush across, now you have your reflection in the water. Now this one's not going to be as pronounced, but you take the same small item. I mean, little, little bushy kind of things along the banks and just tap white on top of it because they're more dense or it's a more dense kind of plant. Okay. And you're going to take that there and pull it down, pull it down. Pull it down and pull it up. I go and make sure that's pulled in there because I accidentally pulled it out. But now I have all of my happy little reflections in there. Yep, no, the little fractions are right there. Marked out. This is just going to be just gray. I, this is just plain so you can see it disappear off into the distance. Just like here. It's there. It's probably rocks of some kind. Let's put this little edging in there. I've got this gay. There's little marks, right? Well, out as just a tree like this. Chisel edge brush. I'm just going up the edge with some white, a little bit of black. And we're gonna have some branches off of here. Do the same thing. Take a branch out. Make a branch go this way. Maybe one over here. And just split it up there. Just like that. And we're gonna do this with the other tree. And we can make this like a white birch. Or paper birch as we call them. We put white on the one side and just pull it ever so. It gives the illusion of bark. You know? And then you can put a low branch here, as low right there. See, this tree is in a foreground, so it's going to be uh, you want it to have some kind of indication. That, oh, yeah, this one's same way. just kind of it's there. Now, the neat thing with this is. You need to have a shadow. You have to, I mean, the light's got to come from somewhere, but apparently it's coming from this way instead of that way. So we're going to make our shadows go the same direction. Now watch this. This shadow of this tree is going to go right into the water. Yeah, it is. So you just grab, it's just light, light put in there. There's that tree. It's in the water. It's got... Its reflection is in the water and it's even going across the bank onto that other s snow is on to this tree and a little bit of it's in there not too much just a little bit but you can tell us there now the trick with this is, is making it Soften, soften it out. And the way you soften it out is you take most paint off. You can use a dry brush, use a dry brush preferably. I'm just kind of, I took the paint, a lot of the paint out. I just put this in there, in that water, and then to the 
Now my back got kind of messed up. I'm going to fix my back here. <laughs> That's going to pick in between all of this stuff. <laughs> going over top of it. There we go. We don't want to lose our back. We don't want to lose the bank that we just put in there. So. Just like that. Your snow hanging over it is just, just taking a big, thick piece of wood and pull it over top of it. It's easier to do it this way. You can use as thick of the paint as you want, more of it. What's called an pasto look. It gives it texture. It gives it, you know, a three more of a three-dimensional instead of two-dimensional. Three-dimensional effect and meet up into it. And cut into it. Cut into it. And you cut into it like this with the black. And that's what shows that it's kind of like dribbling over the edge. <laughs> Not so straight. Throw some heavy white on the, on the on the top part of it. And that gives the illusion of, you know, snow drifted over top of the edge. Just like this. Also hides whatever's under the underneath that bank. <laughs> and you're like, okay. Now I've made the foreground of this water. I'll show you when I pull, pull it up out of here. Um, shadow of the tree across onto it. Same way with the one next to it. Because our light source turned out it's coming from the other side. Now, what are we going to do in the opposite bank? Oh, well, we got our little sled marks. That would have been very good, would it? And of course, it has side, which leaves a shadow. A nice shadow. Nothing fancy, just a little, little building of some kind. It could be fishing gear, a little hut, little canoes, you know, little boats. So, you know, that's, you know, this is just going to be kind of there. That. in here. I'm kind of laid on it. There's no door there. This kit and the bit is going to be behind something. It's going to be a big evergreen. And it was always like right there at the edge there. So this is where the big guns comes in. What do you take? This big, 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 big honking tree. And it's going to be so big. And it goes all the way up here to the end of the sky. Right there. And the little bit of white that's on the bottom, there's some brush or something at the base of it. Which is not unusual. But this big monster. The light source has right here. And I'm just drawing it across, just like this. That is one big, big trunk of a tree.
just like this. Boom. Now we've got the, the highlight coming from the light source to the left, and it is smacking that tree. It could be even mixed with snow, you never know. Now, we've got it splitting at the top there, all right? Still need a bright spot there, up, oh, way down there. The back side is dark, so it comes to meet that white side. And oops, there's a branch, and it just took off. <laughs> oh, the little one had decided to be down here. I don't know what he's doing back there. It's kind of like sometimes these trees get funny little offshoots. But now it's where we get to play with the fan fan brush a little bit. But right now I want to make sure that the other. It's up to snow. <laughs> They got the snow where they've and they dirted it up because there's all kinds of these little tracks in here. You know, all kinds of sled tracks over there. Some longer than others, some not so. And there's one little tree decided it's going to pop its little head back here. Because it's that. I want this big part of the part of the scene. And now you can't see the little cabin very much, but you know it's there. You know it's there. All right. And so this big old tree and these trees on the other side, they need some branching out or as you like I got my uh, new so this big old tree and on spindly branches but hey you know they're there and they can go any which way direction you want you just want to make sure they're attached to a branch. There's that branch down there. It showed up forth, zigzag, zigzag back and forth, zigzag back and forth, just like that. You want to show highlight on them, you to put it on top. Back. Even like on this little sneaky branch that came out. With that also. And these guys, so obviously, you do it on this side. They're a little darker. Because they're back of the light source. And a little spin layer, too. <laughs> skinnier trays. And the ones you want to have the branches in front of another one, that was darker. Move lighter branches to the the uh, lights were sides. Right. Doo -doo -doo. So these branches are in front of that tree. It faded behind it. And then this one's a little bit more pronounced, except for on this side, because that tree is overlapping it. So it's like. Fan brushes are fun because you can do a lot with them. There's the shadows. 
a reflection in the water over to the other bank. And you know you've got water back there, so you put your little um, grasses across behind to show the little leg of the st stream coming behind it. You're gonna have some shade because of the trees are hanging over it like that. Of course, this is the snowy grit part. This is the water part. And it gets darker as you come forward. I want to make sure that because it's pretty deep. And we're just about finished with this one. Kind of, uh, know, not naked, but it needs to have some presence right here. Need some grasses back there. That's all it needs. A bush or something. <laughs> Building back in here somehow. And uh, it's that illusion of it's there. Not exactly sure if there's a door in there or not. Or if there's anything in there. But you can make it have a, a little hill of snow like right there by the base of it. Just kind of make it seem like, oh, yeah, that's that little building back there. I have a little deep part of the snow. You can have that. I like monochrome. I always have. It shows more detail. You can get real with this. Well, you get really detailed with something like this, you take a dry brush, a dry liner brush. Or a dry chiseled end brush. That building back there so you can kind of like see boards in it. Now you can see. Oh, maybe it's a window. That could be a little window right there. Could be. And then you can do the roof. You just use this dry brush and chisel it out. So it's like maneuver. Thanks. You shadow it more. You take those thick spots of paint and spread them out. And draw up into it so that now you've got some kind of foliage that was there in the spring and the fall and now it's winter that's just sitting right here it's right there that's what that cliff is from it's from the big old rock that sits there you want to make it look marbleized you take some white and just put it in there crisscross it Give it that rock look. Just edge it because it's going to have a definite, you know, outline of some kind. And just make it look just a good solid piece of rock. Right there at the water's edge. There's all kinds of things that you can define using a dry brush towards the end of your picture. To put the shoreline in. I don't have any leaves on these, are just like spindly branches. So I didn't do leaves, I just kind of like through the branch. And you can just pull up brush look. There's plants, there's, there's long stems back there. Like the trunk of this big tree is hidden underneath this little brush. It's all down here at the now, one neat thing you can do if you can't, can't, can't bring it upon yourself to have it just black and white, take some blue, <laughs> a little tinge of blue to the white will go a long way. And then you can always, for that little building back there, I don't have any out, that color out, do I? 
but you can take a gray. You're making black and white mix. Makes a gray anyway. But if you take the gray, a gray color, and make it a really, really light color gray, the blue starts to come out in the gray. Gray actually has blue in it. I know that. So you can make a real, real light, 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 light gray. You can make it look like there's a light on in that little building back there. <laughs> you can make it, you can make you know your rock look a little more rocky, so to speak. You can even make your your edge at the uh, water's edge make it look rocky by doing the gray and white speckle it like like marbled rock is by making it look like it was a rocky bank and you're just showing the rocks just put that little bit of white gray every so often just a dot of it and that will give that feeling of a rocky bank and it keeps on and on and on all the way down all the way down for the whole length of that little stream and if you want to show movement in your water you're going to take strokes of just across just every so often a little stroke across just like that Try not to take away your uh, reflections like I sort of kind of just did, but there we go. I got it back in there and smooth it over. And you have a lovely, lovely little bear area. So the water not gonna be totally white. I need to uh, pull some of that out. This is how I do it. The dry brush. Mm -hmm. And then I put back into it with a dry brush. Some really stark white white. To show movement. A little thicker in spots. So that it shows in between the uh, shadows, these little ripples, little white ripples. It's a little thicker paint. It makes you feel, you can feel the rippling of it as it goes down now. Just like this. And dry brush up. And there it is. You've got a lovely little snow scene. Have you enjoyed this? This chrome, no color lesson, kind of like a Twilight Zone thing. It's like, where'd all the color go? And you're ready to tackle it. How about a thumbs up? How about a share a comment? Let me know what you think. It does pretend you've got color and you don't. You just put it on and put your little uh, distant tree line there and we got your gray sky and that's a wintry sky if I've ever seen one. 
you start from the back, you work your way forward, and it just kind of, I just sort of wanted to fix that little spot there, but I didn't have to. And you got your tracks in the snow from the sleds. <laughs> they come down and all around and right down to the boot, very front of, of your picture. I hope you've enjoyed it. I, uh, I love monochrome, as I'll say it again. I really do. I think you can get a lot more out of it because you already get the black and white down. Getting your perspective is a matter of starting small and getting bigger as you come forward. And some shadows that helps you give the depth of what you're painting. I used a piece of tape to hold it in place, and that was a good idea. But now I've got to sign it. I oh, here I am talking about you have to sign it, and I haven't signed my own painting. So I think I'm going to do it in. I always do it in the right hand corner. I don't know why. I guess that's the the thing to do. And I need a specific kind of brush for that. Wet it real good. Liquidy, but. I'm going to sign my painting on here. A little too thick. I need a shorter one. I needed that one. I need one with a stiffer brush. Feels better. Not as flimsy. <laughs> I was using a yeah, uh, almost like a watercolor brush. Scoop that off of there. Just put it as part of the grass. And I have my favorite one to use is this little guy. I don't know why. It's not a liner brush, but it actually holds the paint just right. So let me I have to turn this just a second. I'm going to have it at the, my ankle. <laughs> now, I have to change her probably about five or six times, depending on what name I had at the time. That's the funny thing. I mean, the only one thing that was consistent was the S part. <laughs> and the S in my name. So the Crafty Sue part, the S was always there. And I have this little guy that I put in the corner. That way I tell everybody, if you find a painting that has a little elephant in it, it's mine. I always put it mine. But other people will be like, okay, that's not, that's not Crafty Zeus. There's no elephant. Or there's the elephant. That's her. And he's in the corner. So my little elephant, my name, and it's done. Um, I know you can't see the very bottom. I need to pull this off of here. Show you that what I was talking about as far as dark at the bottom. And now you can see the depth of it a lot better. So this has been monochrome. This has been no color, one-on-one. -on -one. Try it. It is a lot of fun. It is very, very rewarding to be able to do something different. And if you like to sketch, get some canvas, get some watercolor paper, get some Canva board, get something that you can do black and white on that sends out. It definitely, remember when it comes to art, there's no rules. And this is no art, no rules art with Carafte said. So.